Welcome back. This is Rito here with another Terraria Spirit Mod Let's Play episode. We are playing as Seth the Skeleton using magic and melee weapons. And last episode, we defeated the Snap Trapper and the Vain Wrath's Bane. And this episode, I want to try to defeat the Queen Bee as well as the Bird Boss. We've got the Avian Egg over here near the Dynasty Village that we had found in a previous episode. We've got a lot of good new weapons to try out against some bosses too, so that'll be quite fun. So I think right now I'm going to head over to the jungle so we can find a queen bee. But before I go to the jungle, I wanted to show you this awesome build submitted by Always Chill. We had the build contest going for the Seth the Skeleton base. And then the second part of the contest was for overworld builds for other NPCs. And this one is so amazing. Like I said, it's from Always Chill and it is a desert temple. There's lots of cool teleporters and stuff throughout it. So this right here turns all of this solid so enemies can't enter. And there's these awesome pillars. I love all of the different textures that he used. And we've got a house over here. Perfect for an NPC. In fact, let's actually grab an NPC and put them here. Yeah, I think the arms dealer would be a good one to have here. And then maybe we can even put the guide up here. And also the jeweler. Yeah, let's have all those guys move in. Whoa, they already appeared. That was fast. And you see we've got this cool tower up here. I love the little side shoot. And then there is a teleporter right here, which actually brings us to a secret treasure room with a cactus chest right here. I always have thought desert bases look so cool, but I've never actually built one. I tried one many years ago, but it wasn't turning out, so I ended up abandoning the project. But yeah, this is so cool. So thank you, Always Chill, for submitting this build. And I also have one more build to show you guys. It was so cool. I had to include it as well. It was built by Citizen of the Jedini, and it's just got so much detail in here. So I think this would be the perfect place to move the Dryad. Oh, I forgot to move the Die Trader into the desert town. I'll have to do that soon. And I've never seen a fireplace like this. That is so cool. There's lots of cool ideas here that, you know, definitely inspire me for future builds. I'm very curious how he did this right here. That window is so cool. Yeah, I don't know. There's a lot of things to learn. And I think this is supposed to be for the gambler because it's got the different things like the platinum strong box, the gold coffer, silver lock box, and copper chest. And I think that's what the um, gambler sells. So very cool. I'm going to move her in right there. And I think the lore behind this is tied to the briar because of the way these caves filled with water kind of spike down. Very similar to the briar biome. Also, look at that really cool waterfall. Very nice. And the foam with the bubbles right there. I also added this little cave right here because when I was importing the build, I saw that it was on top of an enchanted shrine. And so I figured now that I know where it is, let's go check it out. You can see this is right below the build, but this was the only really good place to add it. And I don't know, I think this might not be an enchanted sword. Yeah, that's just a trash one, but still good to check on those things. The enchanted swords are usually really good, but Honestly, I think we may have already upgraded past it with this Bloodthorn Bane. Now it's time to head into the jungle and go find the Queen Bee. So here is the arena that I built. It's right beside the larva. Gives us plenty of space to fight the bee. Okay, well I think we are ready to fight this boss. I'll go ahead and activate my buffs. And here we go. This is one of my favorite pre-hard mode bosses. I think it's a ton of fun. And as you can tell, I finally removed the Calamity Extra Music mod. Uh, let me just turn off my map. I think it's fun to play without a map sometimes. Okay, let's just use this dagger. I think this dagger will be good. Do some jumping. Honestly, frog legs would be really nice for this boss, but I haven't really wanted to fish this playthrough though. Although we do have the Tinkerer NPC who can sell us stuff like the frog legs. So I may buy those soon. Oh, right there was the effect from our armor where it, we like fall quickly and do damage. I haven't really used that. So I'll have to try that out a little bit more. Oh no, taking hits. Okay, we can try our flail. Actually, let's throw some more water bolts.
here we go. This is the weapon. The photosynthesis strike. Oh yeah, that makes this boss really easy. And then we can switch back to our dagger in between when we charge up our mana again. One thing I've done because I've been a little bit lazy and I always forget is not use any restoration potions for our mana. And that's kind of a nice thing to do with a spell sword because then that gives us a reason to switch back over to melee while we charge our mana back up. And so it's a good way to keep us switching between weapons and not just turning into a mage. Wow, I was missing those bees a lot. <laughs> Those spore clouds work really well for killing the tiny bees. Yeah, I really like this dagger. I rerolled it to, let's see what I got it at, uh, superior, because I think it was just a normal when we got it. Well, we've done a lot of damage. Only a thousand health left. And we're doing the tanking method where you dash into them. I love that method with the Shield of Cthulhu getting the immunity frames. Okay, back to our dagger. The Queen Bee attack speed's increased. Uh-oh. We've got so much defense, though. Right there, I'm... Oh. Nope, it's too fast. I can't do the dash method. There's not enough time. So back to the dodge method. Actually, let's see if we can do this. That's kind of a cool attack. That's one of the gilded weapons that we have. There we go. We've defeated the queen bee. And let's see what we got. We got the bee's knees, the bee wax, bee nades, all of the typical stuff. And let's actually check on the queen bee and see if there's anything that this mod adds. I'm using the boss checklist and it shows loot. And it looks like the queen bee just has the normal loot. So we could get the beekeeper, but I don't really know if we need it. We probably can just skip that, unless it crafts into something later, then we can always come back and get it. But for now, let's go ahead and deposit all of this, and next we can head over to the other side of our map to fight the Ancient Avian. And this is the arena I built. I didn't know how long of an arena we needed. This is probably overkill. But I think all we need to do is break this, and there we go. <laughs> We've got the boss, <laughs> the Ancient Avian. This thing looks so cool like a skeleton bird. Oh no. Yikes, taking damage. Um, I'm not sure what's going on here. So it's like raining down projectiles, like the start of Supreme Calamitous. All right, let's switch over to this homing attack. Wow, lots of attacks there. And we can always switch back to knives to recharge our mana. Oh, this is great. We're doing lots of damage while it's staying put. Man, I'm like losing mobility. I was like stuck. I was trying to move there. It's like it's creating a storm or something. Oh, jumped right into it. No, not good. Uh, let's switch to this. And Witch Doctor just arrived. He'd be perfect to put into the jungly village. Whoa! <laughs> that was a lot of attacks. This really gives me Calamity vibes. At least this part right here. I keep thinking of the Calamity music. 
Whoa, is that a <laughs> storm elemental attack there? Or a sand elemental? Okay, we're only halfway through. And we are taking some hits, so I think it's time to use a potion. Do some good damage right here. Oh no. Whoa, it launches me in the air. <laughs> okay. It's like the silver lining to being hit by that attack is getting launched up, which is pretty cool. This boss has a lot of health. The only thing about this knife is I really wish it had more range. Oh no, we just got a ton of hits. That was really bad. We got sucked up into two tornadoes. Okay, we gotta be careful here. Use our healing. And throw some more damage. I need to be more careful about those tornadoes. Those are the things that are getting me the most. Ooh, it's actually kind of hard to see these attacks when it's daytime. No! No! <laughs> that was so bad! No! <laughs> this is horrible. I'm totally choking right now. I think I'm gonna fight this boss in the night because it helps so much seeing the wind attacks. No! <laughs> That's so horrible. We were so close, there was like 500 health left. Okay, so fortunately we do still have the feather crown and we can craft more of it with these talons and feathers. I'm gonna go ahead and craft one more of these just in case. Also, it'll be a good chance to get the other loot if we have magic or melee weapons. And this time I brought some campfires to place around the arena to give us a little bit more health regen. Okay, there we go. Oh, I'm glad I went up higher. This is so cool. It changes the background. Okay, we were fighting it like too low. Although it's easier to see everything without that background. I wonder if the storm effect still takes place up there. It does. Okay, so we can't go a certain direction when that storm is happening. And now let's get this fight started. I'm gonna activate all my buffs. This is a great damage phase for us. Honestly, having a danger sense or a hunter potion would be super helpful right now. Ooh, we dodged all that. That was good. And let's see if we can get these daggers to hit it. They're really bad at throwing straight upwards. This one's got a lot better range. Easy damage. If you dash, you can kind of move against the wind, get closer. Oh, took a hit there. We got the tornadoes going now. This is when the fight starts getting a lot more difficult. But we're in a good position right now. I'm having trouble seeing this boss. It like disappears when I'm not doing damage to it and I don't have my cursor on it. This is a really cool pre-hard mode boss. 
I mean, that's kind of a consistent thing with the Spirit mod, is having really solid pre-hard mode bosses so far. I feel like sometimes pre-hard mode bosses don't really get as much attention. And this is cool to see, like, the wizard, the moon jelly wizard was so awesome, and then this boss, and just so many good things going on in this mod. We're getting so close. We're trapped in here, though. Okay, the tornadoes are gone. I wonder if we're gonna get both directions of these fireballs going at some point in this boss fight. Doesn't look like they're happening at the- ooh, they are happening at the same time. Sweet. Full on Supreme Calamitous mode. Okay, let's get under it and get around. There we go. We have defeated the Ancient Avian. And let's see what we got. We have a hook. That's cool. There's a lot of hooks in this mod. This is the Moon Jelly event, I think. I think the Moon Jelly must have started. I thought that was for the boss and it didn't make sense, but no, I think this is Moon Jelly. So the hook says striking tiles allows the player to float briefly. Okay, so that's cool. Right afterwards, if you jump, you float. What is this thing? Did I see those when I was in the meteor biome before? Or are these like enemies that appear later on after you've defeated some of the bosses? I feel like I haven't seen these. So it looks like we've got a couple things right here. We have this garb, which increases magic and range damage by 7% and increases movement speed by 10%. It's pretty sweet. So it looks like we might be able to get like a full set of armor from this boss. And then we have a super fast spear. This is cool. It's pretty good. That'll be great for the dungeon, I think. And it upgrades later on to be a really awesome Fury of the Underworld Spear. So we'll definitely need to keep that. We can get a lot of stuff from this boss. We can get the Talon Blade, and we can get Talon's Fury, and we can get a Headdress, which is the other part of this armor set. Okay, so I think what we should do is go ahead and fight the boss once more, and I'll kind of skip through it a little bit because we've already seen the boss fight. Hopefully I win again, but I think I've got the hang of this boss, so we should be able to defeat it. And here we go again. Ooh, this is good damage right here. Get right up close and use a flail. Oh, and I didn't even show you guys this weapon before. This is one that we got from the Vainrath Bane. It shoots down like petals from above. It's a little bit tricky to hit the boss with it, though. And there we go. That's clear number two. And this time we got our blade. Sweet. It says 27 melee damage, average speed, average knockback, launches fossilized feathers. And it seems like it launches at a consistent frequency, so it's actually really easy to time it. Unlike this Bloodthorn Bane, which you can attack several times and you don't know when it's really going to launch. Whoa. And it shoots out a homing projectile every once in a while. That blue attack was homing. That was really cool. And I think that is a great place to end this episode. We've defeated the Queen Bee and the Ancient Avian. And I gotta say, that boss fight with the Avian was so awesome. I'm loving these boss fights in this mod. I'm excited for next episode because we've got a few bosses that I don't even have any idea about, like the Tide and the Starplate Voyager. And then of course, we are going to the dungeon, we're going to defeat Skeletron, and that is going to be quite fun, especially for the lore of Seth the Skeleton. I hope you all have been enjoying this series. If you have, be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.